And uh, if we if we get up on it and say God has called us to preach, we better know what we're talking about. Amen. Because it'll come out if we're not. But it'll show if we are. That's right. It'll show. Thank God I was thinking today, thinking yesterday, the many, many hundreds, multiplied hundreds of souls Jesus has called to this doctrine that he's used me to preach to the Lord of Christ. I have a subject on my heart this morning. I felt led of God. Not take much time. I never do. It don't take much time for me to say a whole lot when God's on me. But I want to call your attention to some scriptures over there. I'm not going to go to it and read it, but third chapter of St. John. Let me quote a few verses to you first. It said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Master, thou art great. In other words, what he meant by, No man can do these miracles, Rabbi, except God be with him. And he went on to say, and Jesus said unto him, there at that point he said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born, Master, when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You must be born again. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. Then the last five words of verse 7, Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Children, that was the greatest message that was ever preached in this world to anybody or ever will be. And it was preached by Jesus himself while he walked the shores of Galilee Amen. and preached among us, walked among us, talked among us, and blessed us daily as we went along. Jesus preached this message, Ye must be born again. Let me tell you something to any preachers around here this morning. Be careful. If you're called to preach, you'll know it. If you're not, you'll know it. And be careful what you preach. Because we will be responsible for what's been preached to the people through the Egypt of clay. It may take a lot up and down, and we may be lost in the end if we're not sure what we're doing in the, the gospel of Christ. But Jesus here said, if I just don't marvel about that, he said, don't marvel about that. You must be born again. If you're born of the Spirit, you're of the Spirit. If you're born of the flesh, you're of the flesh. Well, it was mentioned there at the latter part of the service here, devotion a moment ago, uh, how long it's been. I'll tell you, children, you can figure it out for yourself, and we'll go on with the message as God leads us. When I was 21 years old, I was convicted of God, sinner, musician out in the world going, Elder Stelter was wicked and everything, didn't know a thing about love about God. He convicted my soul when I was 21 years of age. I fell on my knees and I prayed through. I said, pray through. Nobody talked me through. I didn't sign a card or join a meeting house. I was born again. And that's what Jesus said we've got to have, the new birth. Now, I've been studying about that and restudying recently about that. I believe that's about the only text that I can find where Jesus preached while he was here, Brother Daniel. You must be born again. He put the power on that. He extremely brought that out to Nicodemus. You must be born again. And that answer that he gave him about being born again, that made me think of a lot of people today. You know a lot of people face that way about it. How can we be born again if we're old? Brother, he's not talking about the flesh. He's talking about be born of the Spirit. Glory to God. Have your name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Praise God. Be delivered from sin. Have man a new creature in Christ Jesus. That's exactly the way it is, honey. That's been a long time ago. Did you figure it out? I was 21, few days, and I'll be 85 if I live. Figure it out. Brother Bob, there's something said about the preacher, the young preacher. Yes, I've been into the preaching 55 years plus, telling the world about Jesus and about a Savior that can save them and deliver them from sin in this sin-cursed world we're living in today. Brother, I tell you, I like that. You must be born again. Amen. Well, let's go back into the old Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the first part of the Bible in Genesis. And the earth was void without form. 
God moved upon it and this and that and the other. And God said, let there be light. You know how it goes. There was light. And God made all. Now let me get this first. He spoke the world into existence. Uh -huh. Amen. That's the word of God. And then he began to make the manner of beasts and animals and fields and the sea shore and all the water people. He began to make all of them. And he looked back. But him and the son got together. Jesus, the only begotten son of God, they were talking together. And he looked things over. But something came over one of their minds and one said to the other, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over these things. Be the, the boss over him, in other words, control them. Let it be. And the Lord reached down and got him a little handful of dust, God, and raked it up and made Adam. And he looked him over and they agreed he was good. He said he's good. We love him more pleased. He said that a straight man in our image after our likeness. And that's the way God made him, boys. And that's the way he was. Well, sure they was pleased with him, but there was something just like it. The old body was just laying there dead. It hadn't left it into the dirt or clay or dust, if you will. It was still dead. The body was. But God said, now, it pleased me. I love it. I'm going to put life in it. And he breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living soul. A living soul, brother. Inside, not outside, but inside. Brother, sister, my son, I forgot I'm glad to see you all here this morning. And God bless you. But anyway, he said, that man pleases me. He put life in him. What did he do then? One said and the other, not good for man to live alone. He needs a help meet or a wife, as we call them. So what did he do? He just breathed on Adam and he laid over sleep. God just reached in there and took a rib out, set it up on the end. That he called a man, which is woman. <laughs> Women, did you ever realize that you're only one rib of a man? Hey, Amen. That's right. That's the truth. But he made a woman and he was pleased with them. Then he fixed a great garden over the garden. And what did he do? He put all manner of fruit and fruit was a good eat. He put it in that garden. But in the center of that tree, here's the part that's coming. He put a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh -huh. And he said, now Adam and Eve, you can eat all these things of them. But that tree of knowledge of good and evil, don't you eat of it. For the day you eat it, you shall surely die. He didn't die in the body that day, or she didn't either. The soul is what he's talking about, death eternal upon the soul of man. And he brought death upon him. And he, what happened? Then the voice of God was walking in the evening. That and he heard it. And they saw him and they run and hid themselves. Why did they do that? Because they were naked. They were naked. They didn't see that until they could eat the forbidden truth of knowledge of good and evil. I call that the tree that of accountability and people come to that age when they're convicted they've got to come to that age before they'll ever be saved nobody can get saved unless they realize they're lost yeah. nobody can realize they're lost unless the holy ghost reveals it to them yeah. amen. amen and brother it works but anyway adam and eve they ate the fruit and they were naked you know how it goes god cut the tree and leave that put the form they killed their self spiritually now, in the beginning, they were alive. They pleased God. He was pleased with them. There wasn't nothing between them and God. But when they broke with God, and each that forbidden truth of not into good and evil, they broke with God, and God left them out, and drove them out of the garden. Now listen, friends, to me this morning. If you will, I want you to follow me just for a couple of minutes, and that'll be it. God knows who you are and where you are and what you are he knows all about us more than we know about ourselves this morning children he knows more about us but anyway god has said man has fallen now what happens then they begin to replenish the earth multiply and replenish the earth the longer it got the more sinful it got i've thought about that garden back there so many times when jesus told them you must be born again I think so many times about that man, that Pharisee Nicodemus. He was so ignorant and dumb and unlearned. He didn't know what he was talking about. But God explained it to him. I imagine there's some people sitting here today, maybe, 
that don't know what we're talking about. I'm telling you, friend, your soul lives inside. Your heart rules. And if you're not a Christian, you're lost. And you must be born again if you ever get to heaven. That's all there is to it, brother of mine. There's no other way in. And after we get it, we've got to live it by the help of God to keep it. So this morning, I find in that text, you must be born again. I find those five words, the most important words we're never spoken to in this world or anybody. Jesus done that. The Son of God came here, took upon him into a sinful place by the working of the Holy Ghost and the Virgin and Mary, of course. And God used and Jesus was here telling the people what they must do Amen. to be saved. Amen. And friend, I like that. I don't know about you. I met that Savior when I was 21 years old, as I said a moment ago, and I was born again. Yeah. All of those dirty, filthy, stinking sins that I was involved in was gone. Yeah. Oh, brother, back <laughs> uh, that alone would be enough to be saved. That alone would be worthy of enough to be saved if you never see an eternity. But the great part is, where will we be in eternity? If we're not born again, we're lost. Children, when a natural baby is born into a home, if it's dead, you'll hear nothing. You'll hear nothing. But if a man or woman is born again, born of God and the Holy Ghost, they'll let you know. They'll let you know. Amen. You can't hide it and you didn't want to hide it, surely. But Jesus said these things while he was walking the shores of Galilee. Now I got to thinking about that, Lord. That's, that's been quite a little while. I don't know. Maybe I wonder sometimes what the Lord has for me yet. I don't know, but I know one thing. I'm his. He's mine. He's mine. God bless you. That's the truth. But he saved my soul, and, and I was praying to be sanctified, and God showed me then he's going to call me to preach. Did you know that? He did. He showed me that, and I just kept praying, trying to get sanctified. And one night I went home from the church for us, and the band had been playing music in a revival somewhere. We stopped at Uncle Sanctum Baby's house and had prayer. And we'd on our knees praying. And God told me, just as plain as you could speak it, I'll sanctify you if you'll agree to preach. And I said, Lord, I'll do my best. It scared me to death. I just got lost out in backslid all the time. It scared me to death. But God placed that call upon me. And he's proved it over the years, friend, that he called me. And I just about lost out of it. I'm amazed that people want to be preachers when God don't call them to preach. I'm amazed. That's a dangerous thing to play with, my friend, is preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's going to live eternally. All this worldly stuff and material is going to be done away with, and all that's going to stand is what's in God and Christ Jesus for Savior. But the Bible, that's the truth, I mean. That's the truth. But I want to tell you this before I close here in a few minutes. But then he said, well, how can these things be? And Jesus went on to explain to him a lot of things. But I often thought about Nicodemus there, uh, a ruler of the Jews. He was a big man. He was a, a, a devout man. But he was so ignorant that far as salvation was concerned. And he asked Jesus these silly questions, you might say, about that how can he be old and born his own thought. But Jesus said you must be born again. Then he said, if you're not born of the water and of the Spirit, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. Friend, without the new birth, we'll never get to heaven. I want you to hear that and I want you to listen to me. You'll never get to heaven unless you're born again. Born again. What's that mean, born again? It simply means brought back from the fall of Adam and Eve. When God left them, they left God, Brother Daniel, left them out of life. And it means born again and the Holy Ghost from heaven comes into our soul witnessing we're born again. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Back when I was saved and was 21 years of age, plenty of people prayed through they shouted all over the house. Run over top of each other all homes. And I done the same thing. I wasn't any different. I ran around that big church. I don't know how many times. Praise the Lord tonight. I was born again. Greatest thing can happen to anybody in your life is when you come to Jesus and repent and believe him and can do it, he'll do it, and he'll come into your life and you're born again. What happened? I can see Jesus up there. I tell that recording angel in heaven. Get that pen and blood and write that name in my book. That born again. 
Well, yeah, and what's your heart? I mean, that's what happened the night the day you saved, and I was that's saved, and everybody else was saved. He said, write that name in the land of the book of life. And honey, if we'll continue to mind God, let the blessed Holy Ghost lead us, we'll get to read that name someday up there, or one of them will read it to us in the land of the book of life, the land forever and forever. And some of the brothers we talked this morning, testimony about the, the great city of God. Honey, there'll never be a pain there. There'll never be a want there. And the best part of it all, time will be no more. It'll be forever. And I like this part for the Lamb shall feed us in our glorified bodies. That's right. I'm giving you back. And I like that because it was born again and become a child of God and then inheritance to that great kingdom of the other side. But Jesus said too, he, he would feed us the Lamb of feed us, and he'll also tell us the things that he wants to tell us face to face because we'll all have glorified bodies. We won't be wearing coats and shirts and so on and a natural body. The natural body's going right back to some other earth and gave You can be burned up in the old earth when it's burned up. But that soul, that glorified body will be with Jesus. But here's the part I love about it, children. I'll leave this with you before I close. Somebody mentioned this likely in a testimony, one of the brothers and sisters, I don't recall who. But when we're there in glory with Jesus, if we make it, we'll have glorified bodies. Amen. It won't be male or female in, in heaven, or man and wife, or mom and dad, and sons and daughters. It won't be that. We all have glorified bodies together. But the part I like about it, we won't miss the one that didn't make it. But we shall know it. We're knowing. And we'll know Brother Daniel, the one that made it. That little sweet wife of mine was placed in the tomb years and years ago. Such a faithful wife, a child of God and mother. She's just sleeping out there in the little cemetery waiting. Someday God's going to call me, Brother Daniel. I'll have a grave lot right beside of her. We'll be sleeping together till Jesus comes, till God set the gate will put one half foot on, lay them one on seat, and blow that trumpet, and Brother the grave will open up, and the one dead in Christ shall rise first. We'll come out of there with glorified bodies. We'll be together. You know, when old uh, Lazarus over there, when, when, when he died, and Martha and Mary's sister, and he said, that, Lord, he, if you'd have been here, he'd have been alive. He'd been, he'd been dead for four days. Uh, Jesus told him he'd rise. Said, well, said that he'd been dead for four days, and now he's singing. And Jesus turned to Martha and said, Martha, Lazarus sleepeth. She said, Well, Lord, if he sleepeth, he doeth well. And Jesus had to turn and say, Lazarus is dead. But he was just sleeping, waiting on the resurrection morning, and all of God's saints will come out. Other Lucas, and that number that no man can number, will fill the atmosphere and the elements above us as we go up to meet Jesus. And on that cloud, our Savior will be riding that cloud. And on that cloud, he's going to fix us to supper. Yeah. Mary's supper, the Lamb of God. You want to be in it, folks? If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, you can be saved if you will. And if you are a Christian, let's thank God for it this morning. And I'm going to close with these words here. Lord, help us to never fail, but to be true to the end. Then this great man, Apostle Paul, we read about this morning in a lesson. That great man, Apostle Paul, you know what he had to say about it? He told us, the rest of us are coming on later. He said, be faithful. He's telling them, he's talking to you that day, of course. He said, be faithful, for the pride lies at the end of the race. Uh, Brother Daniel, thank you. I like that. I like that. The pride lies at the end of the race. It's not what we was or used to be or would like to be. When death comes, it's what we are. That's going to count. Are you born again? Are you ready to go?